Hello readers, welcome to reading class with me, Miss Taylor. I'm glad you're here. All right, let's see if we are ready to read. Do we have our textbook? Do we have our well, bookmark or finger to follow and track? Do we have our workbook, which right now is a packet and a pencil? If you don't have these things, please pause the video. You can go and get them and then come right back. All right, some things to remember, we're gonna track with our finger. We're gonna read each word carefully and we're gonna pay attention to end marks. Our goals for today are to read with accuracy and expression, to understand what's happening in the story, make connections to characters' feelings, and enjoy the story. All right, we know that reading is thinking, and we want to really be aware of all the things that are going on in our brains as we are reading. And let's see, our vocabulary sentence that we had recently is, visibility was miserable in the fierce blizzard. All right, visibility was miserable. So which word names how well you can see things? Yeah, visibility. Which word names a storm with lots of snow and wind? A blizzard, you're right. Nice job. Visibility was miserable in the fierce blizzard. All righty. So let's take a look at lesson 98 in our textbooks. And we are on page 137. So please follow along with me. All right, fingers ready. Word one is arrangements. What word? Yeah, when you make arrangements to do something, you make a plan to do that thing. So what's another way of saying she made a plan to take a trip? Yeah, she made arrangements to take a trip. Word two is congratulate. What word? When you congratulate someone, you praise the person for something the person did well. If you're excited about something that someone did, you can congratulate them. Like, nice work on um, writing a really great paragraph or awesome job cleaning up your room or congratulations on accomplishing something like difficult, something challenging. Or maybe if someone was uh, running a race, congratulations, you made it. You finished the whole mile or whatever it is. Okay, let's see, word three is beware. What word? Beware. Word four is crust. What word? And word five is dried. What word? Yeah, good job. Oh, Bob wants to visit. Can I help with reading? Okay. All right, let's try the fast way. Ready, Bob? Arrangements. Congratulate. Beware. Crust. Dried. <laughs> Bob's making noises. Hey. Oh. Yeah. She's purring. Okay. All right. And Bob, you can sit here. So let's take a look at column two. Um, Bob. All right, column two. Word one is sheltered. Oh, Bob. All right, you want to be in the video some more? Okay. So things that are sheltered are protected. If something is sheltered from the wind, it's protected from the wind. Protected, sheltered. Word two is tarps. What word? Yeah, tarps. A tarp is a large covering made of canvas or plastic. Tarps are used to cover things like boats and sheds. So everyone, what's the name of a large covering made of canvas or plastic? Tarp, nice job. All right, word three is plunged. What word? Plunged. And word four is tucking. What word? <laughs> okay, Bob. Yes, tucking, nice job. Alrighty, so let's see, there's Bob. Oh, she's, she's. Alrighty, so let's take a look at part B, rest periods. Rest periods. All right. Oh, so we will read the next story about Chad, but first we have some information that we're gonna learn about rest periods. Fingers ready? 
One rule of the Iditarod is that every musher must take a 24 hour rest at one of the checkpoints and an eight hour rest at two of the other checkpoints. This rule was put in so that the dogs would not have to work so hard that they collapsed on the trail. So the, the reason is so that the, the dogs can rest. The musher can rest too. So everybody, how many long stops must every musher take? One, yeah, one long 24 hour rest. And how long are the other two stops? Yeah, eight hours. Bob is rubbing her face on the computer. <laughs> Can you hear her purring? She's such a purr ball. Okay, Bobby, go down there. You're being noisy. You're purring so loud. Okay. So um, the other two stops are eight hours each. And why did they make this rule about resting? Yeah, so the dogs wouldn't collapse on the trail. So the dogs wouldn't get too tired on the trail. And Chad stayed overnight at the Rainy Pass checkpoint. Was that his 24 hour rest or one of his eight hour rests? Probably just his eight hour rest because he got there at night and then he's gonna leave in the morning. So maybe he got seven, well, six, seven, eight hours of rest, but it wouldn't have been the 24 hour rest. Otherwise he would have had to wait until the next night before he left. During the first years of the race, a lot of dogs died from injury, starvation, or working too hard. During the first year of the race, 1973, 30 dogs died during the race. That's sad. 30 dogs died. Even today, with all the care that the mushers take to make sure the dogs are treated well, two or three dogs die during every race. That's not a large number if you remember that there may be 800 dogs entered in a race, but it's still more dogs than anybody wants to die. Yeah, even though it's much better than it used to be, we don't want any dogs to die. Everybody, when was the first race? Yeah, 1973. And how many dogs died in that race? 30. And how many dogs die in races that they run now? Yeah, maybe two or three. Hmm. Chad had not lost any dogs when he tried running the Iditarod before, but one of Chad's best friends lost two dogs in 1998. Hmm. That must have been really hard. And I suppose the mushers would get very attached to the dogs. They're kind of like their family out on the road, on the, the trail. I mean, we know anyone who has a pet, you know, you know they're kind of like your little family, aren't they? Hey, Bob. Oh, Bob is sitting next to me. Hi. You want to say hi one more time? Okay. <laughs> Bob just really wants to join our reading class. Don't you, Bob? Yes. You want to join the reading class? Oh, yes. Okay. Alrighty. Let's find part C. Part C is called Beware of Streams. Okay. Beware of Streams. All right. It was day nine of the race, and Chad was lost again. Oh, dear Chad. So, everybody, what day was it when he reached Rainy Pass? Day three. And what day is it now? Day nine. So, everyone, let's look at the map. The map shows where Chad was on different days. Touch the place he was at the end of day three. So we can see here the red is day one, and the orange is day two, and then here is the, the red. See where it says day three? So all of these are day three, and these little dots are the, they must be the checkpoints. All right, so at the end of day three, he was right about there, right about kind of by the seventh. All right, what's the number of the checkpoint for the end of day three? Yeah, like number six or seven, right, right about there. Now touch where Chad was on day nine. Hmm, let's see, there's day four, day five, day six, day seven, day, oh, day seven, day eight, day nine. 
So right about there. So now he's way over there by number 18. So he's getting close to Gnome. All right. And what was his problem on day nine? Yeah, he was lost again. He's lost again. Ooh. After he left Rainy Pass, things went pretty smoothly for three days. Then the weather turned bad again. Chad's team went only about 50 miles one day and 50 miles the next day. The winds and weather were so bad that he didn't feel it was safe to try to go any farther. Today started out a lot better, but about halfway between checkpoint 18 and 19, a terrible storm moved in. So they're halfway between checkpoint 18 and 19, so right there, a terrible storm moved in. Chad could not see the lead dogs, and sometimes he couldn't see the wheel dogs. He found a sheltered place and stayed there for more than two hours. Then he tried to move on. Within an hour, he had lost the trail. He headed north along the ocean, hoping that he would find the trail again. But as the team was slowly crossing a low area, one of the worst possible things happened. The sled was going over a thick crust of frozen snow. Below that snow was a fast moving stream. So kind of the crust of snow and below the snow was a stream. Chad didn't know that until the back of the sled suddenly broke through the crust of ice and fell into the water below. So he didn't know there was a stream underneath it until the sled, oh dear, the sled broke through. All right, so let's take a look at the picture here. Oh dear, the sled is falling into this hole. So he didn't know there was water under it until the sled broke through, through this crust of snow and ice. And the wheel dogs look like they're being pulled backwards into the hole. So look at the wheel dogs. And then there's Chad, he's like, oh my goodness. The air temperature was around zero. If a person gets wet at that temperature, that person could easily die by freezing. Chad got wet. The rear end of the sled plunged into the water. The front end of the sled was pointing up. As Chad was trying to climb up to the front of the sled, the snow cracked again and the wheel dogs fell into the water. Oh no. Chugger let out a cry. The team stopped. Denali and Butch looked back. Chad was up to his chest in water. He had to get the sled out of the water quickly. Denali and Butch were the dogs that had to pull the sled out. Mush, Chad shouted. Mush, Denali, mush, Butch, mush. They did. They got low and strained as they pulled forward. Mush. Slowly, the team dragged Chugger and Buck out of the water. Then the sled came out with streams of water flowing from it. So how deep was the water? It's about up to Chad's chest. And which dogs had to do most of the pulling to get the sled out of the water? Denali and Butch, yeah. Chad was soaked. He knew that he had only minutes to get warm or he would freeze. He drove the team to a grove of trees. He noticed that Chugger was not able to pull. Then Chad quickly removed some tarps from the sled and hung them from the trees so they made a tent. He quickly unpacked dry clothes from the sled and some emergency wood. This wood was treated and it would burn even if it were wet. It's like special wood that burns even if it's wet. Wait a second. So Chad has to get dry, otherwise he's going to freeze. He, could, he needs to get warm and dry, otherwise he could freeze. Chugger is having problems. Remember Chugger is the, the dog that the vet said might have some hip problems. All right, so if we look at, oh, let's look at the next picture. So if we look at this picture, where is Chad going in this picture? Yeah, he's going to this sort of little tent that he made. And what is he going to do with the wood? He's gonna build a fire. He has to build a fire to get warm. And, and then he's gonna put some dry clothes on. So if your clothes get wet, you need to change them. Otherwise they'll just keep making you cold. And how much time does he have to light a fire, dry off, and change his clothes? 
only a few minutes. Wow. Please read the rest of the story on your own. Get ready to answer some questions. You're still reading please pause the video so second graders what are the things that chad did inside the tent yep he built a fire he changed clothes he dried off chugger and wrapped her up in a blanket and why didn't he just do those things outside the tent yeah it was too cold and everybody, which dog is having the problems? Chugger. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we remember the vet warned Chad about Chugger's hip that she might have a problem. And why do you think Chad didn't leave Buck on the gang line and just replace, replace Chugger with Denali or Butch? Yeah, they're kind of used to working together with their partner. So Buck is used to working with Chugger. So Buck and Chugger are kind of like partners. They're used to working together. And Denali and Butch are used to working together. So it's best to keep the two pairs together because they're kind of like a little team, a little partnership. And everybody, did Chad have a lot of trouble finding the trail? Nope. Whose sled did he see? Yeah, Siri Carlson's. And which dogs were now the wheel dogs? Denali and Butch, that's right. And then Chugger is in the sled. He's like, you have to just rest and take it easy. And then where was Buck? Yeah, behind the sled. All right, well, I hope all the dogs are okay. And it's good that Chad found the trail again. And ooh, I know what's gonna happen. Is he gonna finish the race? What do you think? Are you doing some predicting? All right, so second readers, what are you going to do next? You're going to reread the story. You're going to answer the questions at the end of the story. Complete your workbook and read for 20 more minutes. I'm just going to show you my workbook packet, but someone is sitting on top of the packet. Bob. Hey. Hi. You're sitting on my packet. <laughs> hey. Are you sitting on the packet? Oh, big yawn. Okay. So. That was Bob. And she would like you to read the story one more time on your own. Say bye, Bob. Bye, second graders. See you later. Oh, <laughs> she's getting cranky with me now. Okay. Okay, Bob, say bye. Here. Say bye. Okay. Bye, Bob.